Hello, this is Diana Lane, and this is our respiratory video we're going to do today. Uh, and we can't talk about respiratory, though, without discussing the heart and kidney function. Uh, because sometimes students are given what they feel is a respiratory question, um, but it really is a cardiac question. Uh, sometimes we have too much fluid overload. So what we're going to start off first with is a review of A and P, and we'll go from there, okay? Now here, we start with our trachea. We have our trachea, which then if we put our stethoscope over our trachea, we get tracheal breath sounds. Then it bifurcates at the carina, and the carina is an important landmark to know because when we intubate somebody with a breathing tube, what we do is we put the tube in, and then we do a chest x-ray, and sometimes we have to back it up a few centimeters to make sure that we're not bumping in the carina or pushing it down one side of the lung. So the carina is an important landmark where our lungs bifurcate at the bronchi. If you were to put your stethoscope over one of the bronchi, those are bronchial breath sounds. Then as it breaks down into bronchioles, those are we will have bronchial breath sounds from our bronchi, but then it breaks out into bronchioles and our alveoli here, our upside down respiratory tree. So bronchioles and your alveoli are called bronchovesicular sounds. So if I put my stethoscope here, I would get bronchovesicular sounds. Now in my posterior lobes and uh, back here, I have basically vesicular sounds at the base. That is the majority of my vesicular sounds are at the posterior lobes. So if you are asked a question at all on any of your tests in nursing school about where are tracheal, bronchial, bronchovesicular, or vesicular sounds, you also can get vesicular sounds in your uh, right midlobe under your axilla. Uh, that would kind of be where you go. Also remember with AMP, one of the reasons we have post-op that we have um, people cough and deep breathe, do their incentive spirometry, <sighs> <coughs> cough and deep breathe. Why don't we just have them expand their lungs and deep breathe? We have them cough because the cough reflex turns on the cilia. And if you remember from AMP, the cilia are the normal brooms of the lungs. And they, <coughs> coughing gets them all excited and they start sweeping like crazy. And that will facilitate getting mucus out uh, and if they have a pneumonia. So one of the things we really teach our patients is to cough and deep breathe. But we want to be teaching them the coughing is important because the cilia helps sweep out uh, mucus. Now a smoker, nicotine paralyzes cilia. So the cilia are totally paralyzed. And then when a smoker tries to quit smoking, the nicotine is out of their system in 72 hours. And these little um, cilia go, oh, OMG, look at this mess. And they start sweeping like crazy. And the person is coughing up a lung practically. And they're like, I didn't cough this bad when I, when I smoked. And they go back to smoking and it stops them from coughing because it paralyzes their cilia again. So we want to do that teaching, how the nicotine paralyzes the cilia, so that our patients understand. We'll get better compliance if we explain the why, not just do it, right? Now, here, where we've, we've talked about our lung sounds, we've talked about the cilia, one of the main things with AMP I want to go over, we have to remember the active unit of diffusion when it comes to our gases. And that is where we have one alveoli, and we have capillary beds wrapped up to it. Now when we are born, think of this as an alveoli and this is a capillary bed. And the capillary beds are wrapped around the alveoli. Well, this alveoli has a very thin mucous membrane. Um, think of it like a newborn baby's buttocks. It's just really thin and soft and it's a soft membrane. Capillary comes up around it and then you can get active diffusion of gases. So this is where we have a red blood cell in our capillary. And this is where we can add, this is your nursing diagnosis alteration in gas exchange. If anything happens right here, where you breathe in, this is ventilation, you're bringing in oxygen. 
and the oxygen diffuses to the red blood cell and the CO2 diffuses out. So if I were to smoke and or I were to work in a coal mine or work on a farm without wearing a mask and all that grain and hay dust or be a painter and not wear a respirator when I'm spray painting cars. All those things put my lungs at risk and working around asbestos. So what would happen is that thickens the alveolar membrane. And if this thickens, I'm not going to get as much oxygen on the red blood cell and as much CO2 off. So that I will have uh, retention of CO2. And that's how we become a COPD or when we have, you start off with one uh, risk factor. I, I already have one. I'm asthmatic. I was born that way. So if I went and smoked or exposed my lungs to certain issues, I've already got the first step to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I do not want to go ahead and smoke or be in smoky areas. Those are my triggers. Um, I grew up on a farm, but I can't be around hay because that is one of my triggers. So we want to make sure that we're not smoking and thickening that membrane because that is how we get alteration and gas exchange whenever we have anything impeding this. Uh, and as we go over pulmonary emboli, we'll also talk about alteration and gas exchange because we stop the blood from perfusing through the capillary. So this right here is what I wanted to open up with. Now let's go into our actual some of our mechanism of action is some of our diseases with our lungs. Now, when we have um, any kind of bronchitis, asthma, what I want to show you, like here's a rudimentary heart. And this is my central venous pressure, where the blood is coming back from my toes up through the superior vena cava in, and into the right side of the heart. And the normal CVP is like your white count, 5 to 10. And I'm preloading my right atria, go through my tricuspid valve, go into my right ventricle, and I'm going to have the pulmonary artery taking deoxygenated blood to my lungs where I have an alveoli and a capillary bed. Now this is where I'm actually going to get my gases exchanged because on this side of my heart, I have low oxygen and high CO2. 